Looking for things to upcycle? Have you checked your hall closet for coats? I did. I found my old favorite raincoat. Forgot it was in there. It was my favorite. First, I'm gonna make it fit, and then I'm gonna upcycle it. I'll show you its evolution. Calm it up. Looking in my closet last week, trying to clean it out, <laughs> came across my old favorite raincoat. I, I don't know if it really works in the rain. <laughs> I bought it in California where it doesn't really rain sometimes. Uh, my plan was always to kind of spray it with the rain guard, but I never did. because I just love this. It was a Jessica Simpson. I got it at Macy's a long time ago. And <laughs> I have an idea first off to make it fit better because I think I've been doing with some of my things. I have, there's actually a seam right here. There's all these other seams, these flat felt seams that are really beautifully top stitched. They're, I just love the way that all the little details in this whole coat, even the back, like it's got this great yoke in the back and then more top stitched, all this fitting. I just love it. And here's the belt right here. And I just couldn't give it away. <laughs> so, um, but I have an idea for it that might ruin it. So, um, gotta risk it but it's okay because it doesn't fit anyway but I could make it fit I'll show you how I'm gonna do that so there's a seam here just a plain seam um, goes all the way up to the sleeve I'm just gonna open that up and then add fabric um, I'm also it's all lined I'm gonna take out the sleeve lining because sometimes just the lining alone in a sleeve really makes it tight and feel uncomfortable so I'm just gonna let it um, have my arms be free in there and uh, I don't think it'll change anything. It'll probably make it better. <laughs> so I'm going to take out that sleeve lining. And then I have this fabric I found at Joann's a while ago. It was just a beautiful, like, stretch cotton. Um, and it really, uh, I think it's, like, pretty much really close to this fabric. I'm going to open each side seam up, put about a 2-inch panel in there, which will increase the whole thing 4 inches. Uh, which is probably plenty, but if you do a skinny panel, it might look like it was altered. I don't know. The goal is not to make it look altered. And then I'll probably have to do some top stitching on there to bring it all together. Got to start on that first. And then, fun idea is, did you see the McQueen's, Alexander McQueen's fashion show? It was underneath a bubble. Um, I put some photos up on my Facebook pages and all. Where was it? It was in Europe somewhere. Um, and he had some beautiful tie-dye pieces. Uh, these are some of the pieces that came out of the bubble. <laughs> For starters, I just love this one. I took these, my phone, uh, I was looking on the computer with this fashion show, so there's right, they're not the best, but I was like, oh my gosh, I just love this. This is a, a cloud, it's on black with white paint on there. I don't know how that happened, but I gotta try and get this kind of seen it for this um but i'm really gonna have to practice because oh my gosh but wouldn't that be beautiful if it like had clouds up here now this is black with white so i think i might want to just like do a black wash like a paint wash on there i gotta first see how the dye is going to handle so i'm going to put it on this belt first because this this is got a coating on it or a gloss so I don't know if the dye will even soak through it probably will but um, it's got to test it and then I'm also going to be testing it on this fabric um, just just to see how I probably test it on just a basic cotton first like a Kona cotton and then test it on that because I don't have much of this fabric and I really this was planned for something else anyway <laughs> but then there's this tie dye too this is a blue my um, printer um, didn't cooperate with me here but um, these are like blues, different shades of blues, um, and they're not tie-dye, they're uh, painted. So tie-dye is when you paint them all and then all that, <laughs> um, and put rubber bands around it and all that stuff, but I gotta practice that and then I'm uh, thinking some tie-dye here and it just has to be ever so done right. Uh, maybe the whole top part might just stay white and then the bottom part is this uh, paint. So I'm gonna alter it first. Uh, I'm not gonna finish it. I'm just gonna put the panels in it because if it doesn't turn out, I don't wanna put all that work into it. <laughs> and then and I have to 
toss it. So then I'll be kicking myself because I could have donated it and let somebody love this also. But you know, it's all for the video. <laughs> anyway, so and all for the experience because I really I've been ever since I saw this fashion show, I've been just dreaming of these pieces. So I'm gonna get to it. I'll show you how this comes along. I'm back to work on my coat. It's starting to get chilly here, so looks like I'm gonna get to wear it soon, but I gotta get it finished. <laughs> anyway, so I've got it taken apart. I've taken apart the whole thing. This stuff, it's, it looks kind of strange, but the whole sleeve, I took out uh, the sleeve lining and um, basically I just clipped a couple of threads and I pulled it and it came out really fast, so that was nice. Um, and then I cut out the lining here. I kept this little part of the lining because I think I'll make it like a, a hem, a binded hem edge right here. Um, I hate linings and sleeves. They always, they just, I don't know, it takes up too much. <laughs> but, so it's good. Customize things how you want, right? I'm going to add my strips here. i got to cut them out. I think I'm going to um, do two and a half inch strips and I'm going to put a seam right at the underarm so that I don't use up all my fabric because um, it's my favorite white fabric. I have a plan for another project. Well, I can't remember what it was, but I knew it was something. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get to that, cut the strips out. And then I uh, only have three eighths inch seam allowance on here and I'm going to try and sew it right in um, ooh, this is also interfaced. I think I'm going to have to interface the strips. Otherwise, they might cave in a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get to that. All right, I have my strips already measured. I'm going to use a two and a half inch strip here with a three eighths inch seam allowance. I'm going to uh, cut it up at, how do you say, break it up at the sleeve and put a seam in there just so I can save some of my favorite fabric here otherwise I'd have to cut longer strips and um, I'm just gonna use pinking shears because I have a feeling this fabric frays a lot and it'd probably be irritating to sew with it so <laughs> cut these and pop them into the coat okay have my jacket part interfaced and the sleeve part I do not because I want it to be kind of softer I put a seam right here that's the underarm seam and then I remembered I was going to uh, taper from two inches down to one inch at the sleeve at the cuff the sleeve cuff so I'm gonna um, just I found the, the half of uh, my piece here and then I took it to an inch and I estimated I think this is a little longer than I'm gonna need but it's probably only like an inch and I'm just gonna kind of blend it about 10 inches up here um, from one inch to 10 inches here and that will be the the green line here will be the seam that I follow um, so I'll be putting that one seam right there I'll show you so if you ever have to do this to any of your garments um, and you need to taper things down you just kind of put this well actually the seams gonna go here Oh, that's right and then it's going to go that way <laughs> it's because it's a 3 8 inch seam so I could I could actually just cut this and then it would just easier flow so I think I'll do that and you know, my pinking shears and then I think when I go to the 3 8 there I fold it in half and get it both of them the same right there then when I sew that part here, it'll go three eighths here, and then I'll only be hopefully I just want about an inch at the cuff part, which should be right about there, an inch. So I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna start with the underarm up here, and let me see. Move all this stuff over. Here's this whole thing open, and then I'm also pulling out threads as I go because it just keeps keeps coming. <laughs> I gotta make sure I got right sides together. I'm gonna start at the underarm seam here. And I like to, I wanna sew right in where that um, crease is from the existing seam. So I'm actually gonna be pinning from this side then. I'm gonna put the pins in the direction I pull. It's, I teach that a lot in my classes. Always make sure you're thinking about how this is gonna go get taken to the sewing machine so that you 
don't sit down and have a bunch of pins all going the wrong way. Um, and then it's a hassle. So I'm just going to pin this all in here. Goes all the way. I should have a little extra at the end, which I do. I always just kind of cut a little extra. And then I'll finish that up. Then I'm going to get my sleeve part in here like this. Make sure I don't pull either fabric too much so that it just eases in and goes in naturally when I'm sewing it. You don't want one side being longer than the other. That would really not work with this kind of project. <laughs> okay, so now I have it cut and then it will just taper naturally down into nothing. Looks like I need more pins. And I'll go all the way. And I always, again, leave a little extra there. But when I go to the other side, I want to mark. Actually, I'll just keep it there. I gotta make sure I get it on the other side. Now I gotta find find the other side. That's always the hard part. So here's the right sides together. I'm gonna go this way. And this is I'll find some more pins. This I have a spot right there too. I gotta see if I can get out. Right here, so I'm going to go right sides together. I'm going to make sure, looks like I have to get that out some more too. Make sure these are at the same edge right here. So I'm going to go just like a little bit right there. So I have it kind of hard to figure that out. <laughs> so I'll start there. Now, I want to sew again in this crease so then I have to turn it around this way to pin in the direction I'm going to pull them out so start that way get it started when you're turning all this stuff inside out you definitely have to pin because then you want to make sure you got it all on the right spots before you sew it because then if not <laughs> it's quite the pain Okay, now I gotta figure out the other part here. Oh wow, I got this all turned around. I gotta make sure my underarm seams, there's that seam here, are matching up there. Right there. And then I'll pull this to make sure. Yeah, it's right on target. You don't want like one being bigger than the other right here. And then I'll pin it there. If so, then there's a problem and you gotta check into it. Okay, so I'll pin all this. I know a lot of people don't pin. Um, I think pins are a warning sign if something's going haywire in between your sewing from pin to pin, then you get you get noticed. <laughs> it's always a good thing. Now I gotta flip this inside out and figure out how I had this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, something's, oh, there it is. Okay, here's the other strip. And then I'll get this pin. I'm going to start on the bottom here also. Make sure I have it lined up. Oh, I didn't finish pinning that. I got to make sure. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, this is a crazy. Yeah, I didn't finish pinning it. So, pin here and it looks like oh, I'm right right on the edge there so I'm going to take the other part right here and make sure that these are balanced out also so I'll pin this and sew them I'll show you the results got it all stitched got my panel in and my extension have to admit I did try it on with all the pins in it because <laughs> I was really anxious to see if it was gonna fit and it did didn't injure myself too bad um, I had a couple pins stick in my arm but uh, a lot of times I say you can put things on with pins because a little scratch is gonna hurt you <laughs> big scratch yeah if you feel it coming you're like ah stop but but uh, I always try stuff with pins on it looks like I have a couple puckers here I think I'm gonna have to Press that down a little bit more. Make sure your interfacing sticks really good. So that is how it looks. It looks like this in the inside right here. I got the panels 
stitch there. And then the underarm looks like this. So I have no interfacing here. And then the seams um, just blended right there. So now I have to get a panel with the lining and attach the lining because it's flying all over the place. Um, and I'm also going to try this on a, again to make sure it really fits because now I have to top stitch this. And because this coat, um, to really make that panel look like it's meant to be there, that's the goal, <laughs> um, I'm going to have to, you know, mock this top stitching everywhere. Although I probably oh, kind of really can't get that close to it. But this one, um, their top stitch is real close to the edges there. I think I'm just going to get real close there. It actually will help it lay down better. It'll... Um, It'll look like it's supposed to be there and then when I dye it too it'll hopefully you know the goal is not to oh well, yeah look at all the top stitching all all right here such pretty lines I think that's why I liked it so much because um, I love top stitching I also just a regular thread right here you'll then really tell that it's not um, part of the coat so I got this actually I found this in my stash it's the dual duty heavy heavy duty and I circled it because I try to show my students not to use this stuff because it messes machines up the home sewing machines are delicate <laughs> so but I'm gonna experiment with it this is I don't know it doesn't feel as thick as some of the other ones but I really get right in here it may not even make a difference I don't know but um, stitch close to there first I got to press it and I gotta really make sure that interfacing stays down because I don't want any puckers in there and um, top stitch it so press it, top stitch it, and there you go. Also, this little sleeve thing here, turns out it needed to go on the other side here. I actually just sewed it, didn't even think about what this matches, but look, it's too big right here. So I'm gonna put it over here on this one. And then also that will help that sleeve extension also to um, hide right there too. So that'll be good. So that's simple. Just open that back up and put it back over there. And then press it and top stitch it. And I don't think I'm going to top stitch this underarm. This, for starters, it's way too hard to get in there. So if you ever try to get into the bottom of the sleeve, it's almost impossible. <laughs> so just top stitch this. And then I got to find some lining fabric to make an extension on that, some white lining. I don't know if I have any. Anyway, if I go to the store, then I spend too much money. So I try to avoid the fabric store. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right, I'm going to finish this and I'll show you how it looks. Got the top stitch done. That turned out great. I did have a little trouble with that thick thread. Um, I'm on a new machine. I didn't know how it was gonna react, but it actually did a lot better than I thought it was going to. Um, that, that thread wasn't as thick as some of that heavy duty jean thread that I get, and uh, machines just don't like those. I loosened the tension up just a little bit. Uh, it really gave me a problem at first. It just kind of went to <laughs> freaked out. <laughs> and then, um, but I persevered. And I got it to work. I figured out, loosen the tension just a tad and um, go slow. I put it on, my machine has the speed control, so I put it on the medium because I tend to sew a little fast and actually kept me sewing straight by doing that too. So um, it came out pretty good. I got it nice and even right here. And then I went searching for lining and I found just this piece right here. Wait, so now I got to strip um, this into two and a half plus three eighths plus three eighths. I clipped them here and measure it and like tear it. Oh, my students hate that noise. <laughs> I'll do this later. Um, <laughs> Cause it's like <laughs> tearing it down the cross grain, get even strips, connect the two lining pieces to it underneath there, and then start the dye process. Yay! Can't wait for that. I'm not even gonna finish all this stuff here. I'm gonna dye it first. Cause if it doesn't turn out, I don't want to go through all that work right there. So <laughs> I can't wait to do this. I'm going to um, get an invisible marker and um, play around with the, the where I want to get the, the dye started. I don't know. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of scared to do that. I sound like my students now. I'm afraid. <laughs> and I always go, just do it. Now I'm, now I'm in that position. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'll just start slow. And then, you know, just like you do anything, I guess. <laughs> right. Okay, finish this. And I'm on to the fun stuff. It fits. Oh, wow. 
This is comfy. <laughs> it's been years since this fit, or hasn't fit. Actually, when I bought it, it was tight. And it was, I think it was the lining in the, the sleeves. So once I get that cut out, it feels better. But wow, that feels so much better. Now, I have my little uh, kit. I'm gonna use the dye in the spray bottles. And then I think I'm gonna start painting it on with these little foam things. And uh, I still have my belt. I'll practice on it. I wanna see how the dye soaks into this. Sh this fabric's a little on the shiny side. It's got like a gloss on it or a sizing. I know I've washed this before, so if so, it probably got washed off. But definitely start on all this and kind of see how um, the dye spreads into the fabric. And then, I don't know, this is my first time doing this. <laughs> like painting on something. I've dye dyed and all that. And I've dyed a lot of stuff, especially in the movie business. We dye a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, I have stories for you. But painting it on like that, I haven't done that yet. So it should be interesting. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to tackle that part tomorrow because uh, this was a lot. But it feels so good to have it done. I could even just wear it like this, white. But really, the goal was to paint it. All right, see you tomorrow. Well, I'm back, but it's not the next day. This is months later. <laughs> you see, I chickened out. I was, uh, I practiced a little bit on the belt and I liked the way it came out here, but I just couldn't figure out how to get the cloud design that I wanted on there. Cause I was thinking it's reversed. I needed to, I don't know, I'm not really a painter. So, but I've resurrected it. I'm, I, I've got to wear it. I. I could have finished it and at least worn it white, but I don't know. I think the panels, I don't know, they, they're okay. But <laughs> I, I still want to paint it. So I'm doing a 12 month challenge. It may not be every month at this rate, but um, <laughs> this is 12 months uh, of resurrecting and using what I have, like make, do, and mend. I have a blog about it and I did a video a couple weeks on it. Um, res recession proof your wardrobe and I thought like first month I'm going to do stenciling because that's I've done it a little before and I love the results and I thought stenciling and what I could do is stencil the raincoat so I had this idea from the Tamara show uh, she was wearing this cool coat spray painted so I was I was thinking do some shapes uh, stencil them on there, kind of get this idea, and that didn't work out. So, and I was actually practicing. I did some shapes, painted it, sprayed it with uh, other dye with the stencils. I didn't like it. Then I did another one right here, and I thought reverse it, do it this way. I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I'd do it and then let it dry and then hang it up and think about it. Then what I did was I had, um, some stencils on here in the shape of like donuts, like big circles with thinner lines. So I thought, I'm gonna try that. Third time's a charm. I think I'm pretty settled on this one. I like the way this turned out. Cool. It looks kind of like a galaxy. And then I just stencil, it's pretty simple. I just cut circles. I have a really great technique of making circles that uh, we do in our sewing classes here. We make emoji pillows. Uh, and the reason we do circles is to learn how to sew on different grains and kind of a little more of a struggle. So it's, it helps you become a better sewer. But so I thought I'd just put the shapes on here, just spray glue them on there. And then I sprayed it with blue and uh, a blue spray and then a black spray. And um, yeah, and then I put some yellow in there and I decided I, I don't like that because I wanted to put like some kind of punch of yellow in there. But that's what I'm going to do on my raincoat for my stenciling project. So I'm gonna be cutting out uh, all those stencils and then I'm gonna pin them on the coat and see if I like it. And then I'm, I think tomorrow, the goal is I've been also waiting for a rainy day. <laughs> Not a rainy day, op it's the opposite of that, sunny day. It's been raining, like I was gonna spray it today. It's raining, I gotta put it outside and let it dry. I gotta spray it outside because I made a mess of my porch. Um, just doing the practices. Then I have a white dog and uh, 
he keeps he has to be around so then i don't want to spray him so <laughs> got lots of troubles here <laughs> anyway so i'm gonna cut out my shapes pin them on the coat let it sit for a while think about it and then tomorrow i'm gonna spray it well, here are all the circles i've cut out just in regular paper i'm doing two at a time and i just thought just make a bunch of circles are really kind of fun to do and I have all these. I just got to pin them on. Probably got to iron them out. Yes, I think I will. I'll have to iron them out. And I've got a bunch of little, all different shapes. So I just so I just did one circle and then did more. And then this one's going to be a little more on the. Um, I don't know. It's not so round. So some of the times they don't come out so round, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> and then I'll even do little ones. And then I'm going to um, do little dots like this. Um, all around it. It was pretty fun. So how I make the circles is you just get a regular piece of paper and fold it in half one way and then another way and you have the fold right here and then you get a measurement gauge right here and I think the biggest I can go here is four inches. So um, you can just get bigger paper. I guess that must have been what I've done. There's a hole on the measurement gauge right here. You could actually just anchor that in if you have a cardboard there. And then you go, let's see, we go four. And you do this like a protractor. Four, did I do the four there? Yeah. <laughs> you can put the spot here. Four, four, and four. So we have those four, four inch marks. So they're all radius, radii, I don't, I don't, I, I skip my geometry class here. Um, and I'm going to get some paper shears here. I'm going to cut along those lines. So I get it pretty accurate. That's where those little peaks will come in if they're not. And then I have a whole circle like that. And now I want to do um, skinny ones. Actually, I, wanted, I don't have many skinny ones. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. It's about Looks like about a 5 8 inch strip there. So now I have, a, look how wide that got right there. So I have that 5 8 inch one there. And then maybe another skinny one here, because I got a lot of fat ones. So right there. I've got another one. Let's say I want to go a little bit wider. another one there so see you can get a lot of these <laughs> out of here and then uh, I think I'll do that. I don't have too many skinny ones yes okay or do I I have a bunch of these little ones so you can just keep going and do all different sizes out of one piece of paper that's pretty cool so I'm gonna have to make sure I uh, uh, put a lot of uh, how do you say uh, covering down when I spray this with glue because just to get that right there, there's going to be glue or glue all over. Look, I got so many of these. And then, let's see, if I even want to just get a little dot, I'll go like that. And then I have a little dot. It's not quite a circle on that one. <laughs> How that happens is if this is an exact, like, I can see it right there. This is about a quarter, maybe eighth of an inch off right there, I think. And how you do is you measure it. This one is half, and this one side is at, oh my, so little. That one's, see, it's about an eighth of an inch off right there. So just go like that, round it up. I think I went too much, so then I still have an oval. I still have an oval, so never mind. Okay, so, and then I actually, on some of those, on, on my sample, I used a penny and um, went around it because they're harder to do when they're smaller. So now I need to take these and pin them on the coat and get a pattern that I like because I don't want them all over. I want to kind of go from the back to the front and around the shoulder. I got just kind of have to play around with it. So now it's going to take me a bit of time just to pin these on. And once I get a pattern I like, then I think I'll be using a invisible 
pen and draw it out a little bit and then take them off, spray glue it on and put them back on. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process. Wow, a lot of work to do. Well, this is what I have so far. A little bit up here. I guess I gotta get some on the sleeves. And then I'm also gonna have to hide the, the sleeve a little bit when I spray paint it. I don't know. I have um, the circles going this way and then around and around right here. So I just kind of wanted to swoop it around and then have this all part yellow. But oh, it would be really cool to have that. And what I need, I think I'll bring a circle down here. So it's kind of like, what's going on? And then, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? I don't know. All right, that's what I have so far. I just have to live with this for a little while. I gotta paint this, I gotta do it. I'm brave now. <laughs> Okay, I've been working on my gluing these down. What I've done was I went around it with an invisible ruler with the inside so that I, when I have to take them off, I know which ones to do. And I have the plastic out actually just for the spray glue. I try not to get my coat on it. So I've got all these. Now, the problem here is finding the under one because that one's got to get glued on first. So I'm just going to go around it like that. And I can kind of see peaks there. And then I'll draw. This just gives me an idea where to put the circle back. And I spray them one at a time. OK, so I'm going to do this one first. And I spray it just really lightly like that. And I place it on here. That. This has a little bit of a V in it. A little, it's not a quite circle. But that'd be cool. Okay, now the next one is um, actually this little baby one here. I'm spray it real light. Because I want to be able to pull this off really easy and also not get all over the um, all over the, uh, how do you say, the coat, <laughs> like that. Okay, now I gotta pull off this one I'll keep here. And spray this one here. Protect that. Like that. And I just have to go all the way around it with all of these and get them down. This is sort of like post-it notes. They do come off easy. So if it isn't right, you can pick it right back up. That spray glue, if you put it on lightly, then I gotta make sure it's on there, right? Because we don't want the dye to come in there. And it peels off really simply. At least I hope. I guess, you know, every fabric is different, so I don't know. Okay, printer paper. Recycled paper, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put it here. Like that. This part's going a little faster than I thought. I was playing around with it during class, and um, I was getting more done that. Ooh, sticky. <laughs> this glue is so hard to get off. I gotta find a cure on a, how to get this glue off. It says PayPal balance. <laughs> oh my gosh. Put one in the middle. Missed that one. There you go. Okay, so I think I have most of my bottom part done. Okay, I got it on the dress form and then I just drew the circles on there and then I'll spray it at the table on the plastic and then put them on individually right there. So I'm going to start with these two here and I think it's actually easier on the dress form because I can just spray it on this plastic <laughs> and I have to worry about the coat getting caught but it's too hard to go down that way. I think it was, now I can't remember, <laughs> I think it was this way. I got a gray piece in there, and then I got this one right here. I think it went like that. Yeah. 
That's going to be right on the lapel right there. And there's a buttonhole right there. That's going to be fun. All right. So. Okay. I got it. Looking good. Let those dry overnight. Wow, they're looking good. That's so cool. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. I can't raise the thing up. My hands are too sticky. But there we go. Okay. I'm going to go home and uh, I'm going to take some stuff home in case I spray this tomorrow morning. Wish me luck. I'll show you how it looks. Okay, here goes. Oh, I hope Mo stays. The wind kicked up for a second ago. Here goes uh, my spray. I'm going to deepen the color. I hope Mo just stays there for a little while. What's my plan of attack? really see the difference in that side. Wow. I'm just going to do a steady, a steady stream. in New York City and I was standing on the curb and somebody sprayed me. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what I wanted to look like. So it's kind of fun. I don't know. What are you going to do? Um, so now I just got to peel all these off. Oops. I'm hoping these come off kind of easy. Wow. Oh, this one. I'm going to have to work on that one. But look how it looks so far. Pretty cool. This one, and that button got dyed. That's good. I was hoping that would stay on there. Just gotta peel all these off. That. This is kind of fun, this part. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me see. How is that looking? Now you just don't know how it's gonna look. Until you're done. There's a whole coat. 
and that's good. The, there's still purple marks under there. I was hoping those would uh, get in the way. And there's these little circles I got. We got one little circle there. I thought I had more. I have one up here. Yeah, I can't even tell where they're at. There's one over here. So far, it's looking interesting. It's definitely funner, right? <laughs> and then when this, you wear it like this, and then it's looser. And then I have the belt. I think I took most of these off of the belt. Now the belt was uh, already dyed, so it has just the gray spots here, but uh, you still can see them. So the belt looks like that. And then the belt's gonna come in here. It's fun to have the belt. Oh my gosh. I think I'm actually liking this. I was really worried. <laughs> wasn't uh, wasn't sure how this was gonna look, but um, wow! So I will continue to take these off, and then all I have to do is um, stitch up the lining. I guess I got a little bit on the inside here. It didn't really bleed through on any of the paper I put it in, so that was good. And uh, yeah. more of these off. Interesting. I'll probably, I'll probably wear it and still be finding stencils and be like peeling them off. That would have actually been fun to wear it somewhere and start peeling them off. <laughs> Should have thought of that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Oh, here's one. I didn't even see that one. Look, I can't even see it. It's like, well, here's Wal where's Waldo? Do you see what I mean here? Oh, peel one here. Okay, look how that's looking. Wow, I'm pretty excited. This is fun. What's it gonna look like on? You see, I kind of was trying to do this whole swooping thing. Continue on this. Nice. Nice. This was an important part to me right here. I wanted to. <laughs> that actually happened to me when I was in New York. I had just arrived to the garment center. Oh, look, I even have more on here. And uh, I had a brand new skirt on. I did a video uh, um, about stores in New York City. And I was walking and I went too close to the curb and um, I got sprayed a little bit <laughs> in my brand new skirt. But I was wearing this cool skirt that had abstract print on it. <laughs> I was like, wow, you'd never even know. So I got a little dirty on it, but I was only there like 10 minutes and I already got dirty. So the garment center in New York City is a little dirty, but uh, yeah, there's my belt. Okay, I'm gonna continue on with the back. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna call this my New York City walking on the curb jacket. <laughs> I like it. It's fun. Yeah. That's how it looks. Ta -da, I felt another one up here. Or, oh yeah, on the, on the collar. Oh, that's the one I can't get off very well. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, one little drop up there. Oh, and there's a circle right here. Oh, was it, it was a donut one. Oh, cute. Okay, now I have to close this all up. Where's my coat? Wow, New York City. <laughs> Standing on the curb coat. <laughs> Here's the coat. Ta-da! Hope you can see the whole bottom part of that. There's all the circles. It, uh, this will definitely be fun to wear. Wow, a lot more like black and white again. <laughs> Now, the, I don't see a lot of the navy on here. I see mostly black. So I definitely did a lot more navy than the black. And yeah, it's too late now. <laughs> but I made the navy a little darker. And yeah, it looks like a, it's like a road, um, road gray. So it does look like you're standing on the corner, got sprayed. And you're like, standing on the corner, got sprayed, and I was holding a bunch of circles. That's the back story. <laughs> But uh, there is one little problem right here. I got to work on this still paper stuck on here and I can't get it picked off. 
and it was a little it was strange because it was a different kind of paper it was gray and I'm like I don't know even where I got it but I remember putting it on there and and I put a little extra glue there because I wanted it to really be crisp there and I got the opposite <laughs> so I'm gonna have to figure out how to work on that I gotta try and get I'm afraid to put water on it to get the paper off uh, because it might spread the dye and then it become like a gray smudge so I don't know I gotta think about this one but first I still gotta hem all the inner parts in here because this is stabbing me <laughs> and then and connect the lining back yeah, I feel like I got pins like pins everywhere I put stuff with pins on it all the time but yeah it's fun I think this is gonna be pretty fun to wear I think I'll, uh, I'll wear that this weekend be fun all right so now that is january's project of stenciling that was my uh challenge of the year was to try a new project i hope i inspired you to go in your closet pull out something that's been in there a while and resurrect it what can you do with it if you like this video give me a thumbs up and um i'll see you in the next video